Hey everybody, I'm the Bat Otter, and in this video we're going to be going over some of the stories in Venus in the Blind Spot, the Junji Ito compilation. And I've seen this on the shelf before at Barnes & Noble whenever I go, and me, I like space, I like aliens, so the book itself has always intrigued me, but I also know that Junji Ito's books are often compilations of short stories, so I never really uh, went to pick it up. On top of that, I myself, I'm not really a horror guy, because... There's just something about horror that I can never really latch on to where instead of being on the edge of my seat in suspense thinking what's going to happen next, usually whenever they get to the punchline or whenever the tension's really high, I kind of just chuckle because I think it's funny because I'm not taking it very serious. So my solution to that is I'm going to read a bunch of Junji Ito until I do latch on, until I do figure out what the big deal about all this stuff is. So the opening pages are covers from unrelated material, Uzumaki, uh, whatever this is, just other material in general of Junji Ito's colored works. And I always, always really appreciate it. I believe there's a an art book, I think called Twisted Visions, that is uh, a larger format printing that has all of his, not all of it, but a compilation of his colored work that I've wanted to get my hands on for a while, uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it. It's really good stuff. I always like the atmospheres that he creates with his colored work. It's a very unique feeling and texture that you can't get with most other artists. And of course, since he's horror, bringing color to horror always amplifies the feelings and it amplifies the dread that may come with it. So I really appreciate the opening pages here. And the first story in the series is something called Billions Alone, which opens with a kid who's pretty much a hermit. Now, I believe there's a Japanese term for it. I saw something online about it, but I'm just going to call him a hermit. The premise of the story is that these people keep on going missing and turning up as stitched together bodies in these gross, uncomfortable positions. As you can see, it's very gross. It's very uncomfortable. So the kid hears about it on the news and he's like, ah, sucks for them, you know? Lucky me, I don't go outside. <laughs> uh, and it's very clear that he has no interest in engaging in, in social situations, social gatherings, uh, as he hasn't been out of his room for seven years, according to his mother. Uh, but there's a coming-of-age ceremony, uh, which is a class reunion for his high school, and he really doesn't want to go to it. That is until an old crush of his shows up to his door. And of course, whenever that happens, she invites him out with some friends. She touches his hand and this guy just loses it, right? As any hermit would. So he goes out with him and he's actually having a decent time. That is until he figures out she's engaged. <laughs> he just can't catch a break. Oh, yeah, we're actually getting married next year. He's like, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <clears throat> and he heads out, because he really only came here to talk to the girl. And on his way out, they say, Hey man, we're going on a group date, you should come with us. Which is really just digging the nail in even deeper. Uh, on his way home, though, they find more corpses strung up in a little... What do you call them? A little ditch, you know, a water drainage system as a plane flies over dropping all these flyers with the lyrics to that Billions Alone song that he was hearing on the radio earlier. So, as you can see, it's a, very, it's a short story, the tensions are rising pretty quickly, and more and more and more bodies pile up, with the quantity of the bodies getting larger every time. So he begins to do some research, realizing that it's groups of people are disappearing all over the country, and all over the country, people are found sewn together into a single corpse. He does some research into it, and he's like, oh, crap, places with a lot of people are dangerous, right? He calls up the girl. He says, hey, listen, uh, I think we need to cancel the reunion because it's groups, large groups of people that are going missing. She says, no way. I mean, we can't cancel the reunion. We've been having it for days, and it's not until an office Christmas party goes missing. And you get a really nice page turn, which I appreciate in this book. Junji Ito is very good at setting up some page turns, because while you might expect to see a group of corpses, you don't expect to see them in this fashion, which is very gruesome and very gross. I actually cringed whenever I turned this page here, because imagine waking up to that. It's Christmas, it's a nice time, you know, murders at that time are always really sad, 
and you just see the Christmas trees, this this nice symbol of peace and hope and, and family and all that. I know that sounds really cheesy, but whenever you contrast it with half-naked corpses strung along them in this web-like fashion, it is very eerie and unsettling to see. And especially contrasted, like I said, it, I, I'm a big fan of contrast. You guys know I use that word a lot with a very plain environment and a very peaceful environment and you see all these corpses strung out all over the place in 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 just gross fashions i mean look at those two absolutely disgusting so government officials meet up and they say oh well i mean there's there's no way that they can do anything it gets to the point where the fam the family reunion class reunion is happening he's standing outside kind of unsure on whether or not to go in the cops hassle him until the girl says no no he's actually with us and on their way in well, it turns out they're all gone. Every last one of them is gone. And the next page over, they find them all again in this gruesome web of death. Just take it in. Take it in. I'll give you a second. It's disgusting, right? It's absolutely horrible. I really liked where this was building. It was pretty clear where it was. Well, it was the the build was clear. I, I was very interested in what the the eventual setup was gonna be. And it gets to the point where everybody's locked in their houses, not even willing to engage with each other in the same room. Very uncomfortable. The entire uh country closed down effectively. A lot of people were making um parallels to the coronavirus situation, and I didn't even think twice about that. But yeah, I suppose for some people they can view that in that sort of sense because people in their own houses weren't even getting together with each other, much less groups of people. Until he calls the girl because her fiancé ended up going missing and she says, well, will you come over with me? And he says, yeah, I'll go over. Because then this this guy, he has nothing to live for. What What's this guy's life like? He has a girl who's now single that he's liked forever and he has the chance to talk to her. He's going to take that. He's like, I don't care. I, I like I wouldn't mind becoming a part of a group corpse if it was with her. I, we can clearly see where this kid's headspace is, and I think a lot of people say, "Oh, that's oh, that's not a a good person." I'm like, listen, man, people are crazy. <laughs> people are crazy, and so you get a high school age kid who doesn't know any better. Yeah, he's gonna do that, and as the plane is flying overhead, the flyers drop, and he's like, "Oh, hey, the military." Uh, he starts running to the house. He says, oh, they're going to save us until he gets to the house. And he hears somebody singing the song. So, so excited to see her finally. And we get the payoff of the book. And it's her sewing her parents together as she's singing. Now, I love this page. Absolutely adore it. With the foliage in the background to the way that the parents and the dog are strewn together to the very, there's something very satisfying about the pose that she's in, with the way that her head is slightly turned, the way that her hand is... I really, really like this pose in particular, for some reason. The way that the hair falls... It's a very natural pose, and I really have to hand it to Junji Ito, because while I may not always like his stories, the very subtle expressions that he uses in his artwork, where it's very subtle head turns and expressions that are so natural and lifelike, Despite the fact that there's very little detail on the head, he is a very, very good artist whenever it comes to subtle details that I, I really don't see very often, if at all, in other manga or comics. So I always have a very strong appreciation for the way that Junji Ito does subtle expressions. And that's how the story ends, with her singing the song and, and stitching her parents together. Now, to be quite honest, I laughed when I saw this. Because I, I just didn't get it. I didn't get the punchline. It's like, you told me this huge long joke, said the punchline, and I'm, I'm staring at you with a blank face. Uh, and I don't know if it's just me, uh, if I'm just that dumb, but I, I really didn't get it. So, all in all, I, I enjoyed the story up until the very end, and that goes for most of these, if I'm being honest, where it's a good story, and then it gets to the end, and it's like, eh, that's... I mean, that's what I read this whole thing for. Uh, but it's about the journey, right? So, all in all, uh, good story, funny ending, if I do say so myself. Had a good chuckle. Uh, so I enjoyed it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
And that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this, uh, please comment, like, subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think, and tell me if you have any solutions. I read online somewhere that whatever the song plays, it causes people in a group to do that to each other. But I'm just thinking, well, how do they string them up like that? To me, the logistics don't really make any sense, and then who's doing it? You see why I can't invest in... I ask too many questions. I think you're not supposed to ask questions in horror. You're just supposed to go with it, and I... I can't do that. I'm like, well, who's doing it? How are they doing it? If it's the people doing it, then how are they moving all those people? And who's playing the songs? And why do the songs do that? It... Never watch a horror movie with me. Anyway, like I said, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if I'm just like, oh, you asked too many questions. Whatever. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next five stories that I'm going to be doing out of this book.